From the director who brought you Smokey and the Bandit, Hooper, Cannonball Run, comes the ultimate spectacle. Megaforce, an elite compact fighting unit armed with the most sophisticated weapons ever seen on a movie screen. The mission to preserve freedom and justice and battle the forces of evil. Oh, hell yeah. It's Megaforce time. Forget all those bad movies that bored me to tears or brought my blood to a boil. No, this, this is how you make a bad movie. This is the essence of so bad, it's good. Released in 1982, Megaforce was directed by stuntman turned filmmaker Hal Needham, who you may remember as the director of such classics as Smokey and the Bandit, the Cannonball Run, and of course, Rad. Needless to say, Mr. Needham was not known for the quality of his work as much as he was known for its stupidity. This fine tradition carries over into Megaforce, which I dare say is the pinnacle of Hal Needham's career. He never got crazier or dumber than this. So now you're wondering, what is this movie about? Well, never fear, because a disembodied voice is here to explain. Despite official denials by leaders of the free world, sources now confirm the existence of Megaforce. Unfortunately, our source was Glenn Beck, so no one believes us. A phantom army of super elite fighting men whose weapons are the most powerful science can devise. Their mission to preserve freedom and justice, battling the forces of tyranny and evil in every corner of the globe. And after that, we head into the credit sequence. Barry Bostwick? Michael Beck? Persis Cambada? This cast is awesome. It's like a gathering of B-movie legends. We all remember Michael Beck from Xanadu. And, of course, Persis Cambada was the bald-headed alien chick in Star Trek The Motion Picture. But the best one is Barry Bostwick, who recently starred in the greatest presidential biopic of all time, FDR, American Badass. You've got the polio, Frank. Does my cock still work? Let's get wet. <laughs> How in the world are we going to storm the beaches of Normandy, take down an entire army of werewolves, and still make it to a French titty bar by last call? I present Douglas MacArthur, Chief of Staff of the United States Army. Dougie Mack. This is Commander Winston Churchill. This is General Dwight Eisenhower. Mussolini. Hitler. Eleanor Roosevelt. Albert Einstein, the real check in. Shut the fuck up, Einstein! Smart! Smart! Our movie begins with awesomeness, as Henry Silva blows up some sweet miniature models of what I'm sure were impressive buildings. I think that one was a grain silo. Maybe Henry Silva really hates wheat. Holy fuck, Henry Silva's in this too? This movie gets better by the second! Henry Silva plays Guerrera a prick rogue military officer bent on invading and conquering the African country of Sardoun, which is ruled by Persis Cambada, who plays a peaceful princess. She won't let her military hunt down and kill Guerrera, just hold him off whenever he shows up. But that tactic isn't working anymore, so she and her foppish British cohort head off to the middle of nowhere looking for Megaforce. <laughs> Howdy, folks. I think I need that vodka and tonic. Howdy. Sneaky little old devils, ain't they? You go looking for Megaforce, and you find Michael Beck. Good enough for me. And can I say, I fucking love his Texas accent cowboy hat, and his skull t-shirt. No one has ever been more Southern than this man is right now. I know I'm just repeating myself, but I fucking love Michael Beck. 
anyone who can be that goofy and enjoy himself that much doing it is a-okay in my book. Welcome, General Major. I'm Zachary Taylor. Very pleased to meet you. That is not to the tips above all of you. You wouldn't think that a movie that takes place in Africa would need a token black guy, but this one does. Hi, only black guy in Africa! Eagle Base, this is Red 3, now commencing run, target range. Roger, Red 3. This is so hilarious, it's almost orgasmic. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh. What? I'm doing my shake weight exercises. This is Ace Hunter, the leader of Megaforce. And no, your eyes are not deceiving you. That really is Barry Bostwick from Spin City. Unless your eyes told you that was Barry Gibb, in which case they did deceive you, although I can fully understand the mistake. What you need? What wild creature? Oh, just oh, no shoulder. No shoulder. Oh, snake. Holograph. No. Real. That long. That big around. Dang near. <laughs> Come on now, boys. We all know what you're really talking about. So Ace and the guys drive Princess Zara and her fop to Megaforce HQ, which is a beautiful soundstage combined with a beautiful matte painting. Ace and Dallas take their guests on a tour of the base, including a hangar full of vehicles and weapons that are so top secret they shouldn't even exist. Awesome. Man, I thought that was still on the drawing board, or at least still in the testing stages. It is. Forgive me if I appear to be a little confused. After the grand tour, Princess Zara and her fop ask for info on Guerrera, which it turns out they won't need a computer for, because Ace actually knows Guerrera personally. You know, they're old school buddies, the classic cliché. Something about Guerrera's home country being conquered, and him going mad. <laughs> and oh yeah, this. What happened? He stole my lighter. That bastard. Later that night, Ace demonstrates his plan for attacking Guerrera by using some sweet holograms. This plan is ridiculous, by the way. It's so needlessly complicated and so reliant on impossibly tight timing that it is guaranteed to fail. Now, Guerrera's forces are in two main units. Heavy armor here by the border, and here, headquarters fuel and ammunition dump. Our remaining planes are over the DZ with first vehicle out of the door at 0421, last at 0423, on the ground, combat ready at 0426. It's five kilometers to the dump. We will strike at 0430, destroy fuel and ammo dumps and as much equipment as we can, withdraw and regroup by 0434. Four minutes? Isn't that a bit ambitious? Princess Zara decides she wants to go on the mission with them, but first, she has to prove her mettle to Ace. And this is fucking amazing. Now, there's nothing to be afraid of. If you want me to, I can take you out by the hand, and if you freeze up, I can pull the ripcord for you. Is that all?
Holy shit, this is the greatest movie I've ever seen. <laughs> Zara kicks ass on a battle simulator too, but then Ace flat out tells her she can't come on the mission because Megaforce is such a well-oiled machine that they can't afford having a variable in the mix. This is a really shitty way of saying, Ew, you're a girl. So Megaforce flies off for their nighttime raid on Guerrera's compound, which involves dropping tanks, trucks, and motorcycles out of airplanes with parachutes. Megaforce attacks Guerrera's compound, which looks oddly similar to a Moroccan village from Casablanca, while Gordon Soli runs things from a mobile tactical base. Hoping to lure Guerrera across the border, they run off and lie in waiting. And he follows them, all right. Man, you stole my lighter. You stole his lighter, you bastard. Here, it's yours. Compadre. What? So General Fop McLimperist flies in to give some bad news. Megaforce's attack has been declared an act of war, which means they can't be allowed to re-enter Sardoon, as that would drag them into a war they can't fight. And so Megaforce is stranded. The only place their planes can land to get them is an old dry lake where Guerrera has already staged his tanks. Gentlemen, we have a little problem here. As I see it, we've got two choices. One is we split up and everybody heads for the border on his own. Oh, now, Ace, you know that ain't gonna work. If I don't have somebody to follow, I'm gonna get lost. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, choice two. The dry lake bed is surrounded by mountains on three sides. Now, Guerrera has moved his army so that the mountains are at his back. Now, he knows that the only way in is straight down his nose. As we hit those flats, he's going to shoot us like fish in a barrel. But sometimes what was working for you can work against you. Having discovered a trail that will let them sneak up on Guerrera from behind, Megaforce heads toward the lake bed. And to avoid detection, they run their equipment on silent mode, which is another way of saying Hal Needham pressed the mute button on the microphone. With the planes arriving and Guerrera unaware of Megaforce's arrival, it's time for the final showdown. After several minutes of explosions, the planes land for the rescue, but Ace is down and it looks like he won't make it in time. But before escaping, he has something to do. <laughs> Duke. Oh, listen, I just wanted to say goodbye and remind you that the good guys always win, even in the 80s. See you, Duke. <laughs> yeah! I don't know what that means, but yeah! With no time left to spare, the planes take off without Ace. But never fear, children. Our hero has something very special up his sleeve. It's you and me, buddy. One. Two.
And that was Megaforce. They didn't accomplish a damn thing, but you know what? I don't care. That was awesome. Enough said.